My father, Owen Smith, married my mother, Mae Toll, to her maiden name, in June 1946. They lived for a few years on Main Street in Fork Hill, but moved to my father's home house in 1948. The house had a kitchen combined as a living area and one bedroom. Here, my father, mother and six children all slept in the one room. I was born in 1952 and lived here until I was four. My grandmother, my father's mother, also lived in the house and had a small alcove off the living area for her bed. Fresh water was got from a well at the front of the house with a toilet also out in the yard. No bathroom. We washed in an old tin bath. In front of the house were two small fields and here we ran and played every single day. My four older sisters walked the long trek across fields to Fork Hill School. The fields took them from the house towards the bog road and then they crossed more fields to arrive close to Emily's home house and then on to the school. My father showed great initiative and enterprise when in 1954 he bought a couple of fields at Shane Road close to the Fork Hill village. He worked long hours to clear the scrub and break up the rocks until he had cleared the site for a small three bedroom bungalow. In 1956 we all moved to our new house with Granny, my father's mother, in tow. I can remember the excitement on the day we moved. My older sisters dispatched to the new house to clean and wash. Life was simple at that stage. School, home, a few chores, helping my father cut bushes to clear two more small fields, feed the pigs and take in the cow now and again, and then Football. Football was our total pastime every day. My brother Gene and I played championship games every single evening in a neighbour's small field with two sticks and two jumpers as the goalposts. On Sundays we went to Gene McKernan's on the Bog Road to listen to Michael O'Hare commentating on big games. Then home again and we did a running commentary as we played the match over and over again. As we lived along the border, my father used to do a bit of smuggling of pigs. One day, he and Tom Mina, a neighbour up the road, went off to Carrick Macross in his old A40 car, bought a litter of pigs, put the back seat down and put the 15 small pigs in the back. The pigs fell sound asleep and the two boys decided to stop along the Castle Blaney Road at McCarl's Bar for a bottle of beer. In they went leaving the pigs sound asleep in the car, had their drink and came back out to find the pigs still sound asleep. They arrived home to recount their great story, a story that my father told many, many times over the next 40 to 50 years. I look out my window and I see Slave Brack. When my granny Cunningham was a child like me, she used to climb that mountain from the other side in Carve where she lived and down my side close to my house in School Road, for Kill, where I live now. My Granny Cunningham lived just over the border in Dungooley, County Louth. She could throw a stone from her house and it would land in the Ring of Gullion in County Armagh. My father and his father lived in Fort Hill. My grandfather had a shop in Fairhill. He was also a cobbler and a farmer. His nickname was Heelbow. My father went to London during the war in the late 1940s like so many other young people in the area at that time, to work. He met and married my mother, who came from Swinford County Mayo. He took her back to live in Ireland in the late 1950s, just across the border in Dungooley, where they built what they deemed to be a luxury house. It had no inside plumbing and no electricity, until at least 10 years later. I can still remember carrying up buckets of water from Hockey's Well over the road. We had a small farm where we reared pigs and turkeys. Both my father and mother provided a taxi service to the neighbours going to Mass in Kilcurry and anywhere else they needed to go. Most people in the area didn't have a car. It was unusual in those days to see a woman driving a car, so my mother caused quite a stir. 
Smuggling was a way of life around the border in the 60s. My father opened a small shop just a stone's throw from the spikes that marked the border at Carroll. The Irish spokes were supposed to stop people driving across the border. Needless to say, it didn't. We sold anything in the south that was cheaper in the north. We had regular customers that came into our shop. Several women came to us through the fields to avoid the customs from Dorsey and Newton Hamilton. They would get a lift up to Tully Donnell, walk up the back of Lavelle's and down to Frank McCarpenter's house. After a bit of crack, maybe a cup of buttermilk and a piece of soda bread dripping with butter, they would be on their way again. The women came into our front door instead of the shop. They bought cigarettes. Mum would open the cartons of cigarettes. The women would pack the individual, the individual packs down their jumpers right down to their waist. They'd bind their twine tied tightly around them to stop the cigarettes falling out. We sat at the kitchen table watching through the slit in the door. One by one, they would pack the packets inside their jumpers. They got fatter and fatter. We could hear the crackling of the paper as they pushed them round through their back. We used to laugh and laugh. But Mam said the customs would never know they had anything. The customs men were a regular sight around the border. They had lovely shiny black cars that gleamed in the sun and they always wore suits. We could spot them a mile off.